Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation F VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be featuring the team that I used to qualify for the 2024 Pokemon Video Game World Championships. I basically exclusively used this team in tournaments between February and April, and brought it to local tournaments, the online global challenges, as well as the European International Championships, which was the largest tournament of all time. I made it through day one of that competition, and as a result, qualified for Worlds at that tournament. It's my 10th time qualifying for Worlds, but this one is really exciting because I actually haven't played in Worlds since 2017, since switching over to becoming a commentator. I qualified last season as well, but decided that I want to commentate at Worlds last year. But this season, I came in with the goal of qualifying and competing at Worlds. And the main reason for that is because I knew that I'd have a lot more free time this summer since it's between the end of my grad school program and starting full-time employment. And so as a result, I am really happy to share that I qualified for Worlds at EUIC and and share that I'll be competing in Hawaii this August. This team is one that I think is just incredibly strong in the Regulation F format. We are nearing the end of this format, but I still wanted to share the team and kind of the process that I came to as to deciding why I thought this was one of the best teams to use. And it is a modified version of one of the most popular Japanese balance teams, featuring Pokemon like Calm Mind, Raging Bull, Assault Vest, Rillaboom, Incineroar, Landorus, Champau, and Water Urshifu. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team and talk about my experience playing with it in tournaments a little bit, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down in the description below. I took a really long break these last few weeks, so it feels really good to be back, and I can't wait to dive into Regulation G content with you all as well, but let's close out the Regulation F format, and thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, it would really mean a lot if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's get started. As always, if you're interested in trying out the team, the rental code is on the screen and the paste is down in the description below. As mentioned, this is a balance team that was originally popularized by a Japanese player that did very well in the first global challenge with it and qualified for the Japanese national championship qualifiers with it. I essentially made a bunch of small modifications, such as changing Terra types, me moving some EV spreads, and I tried out some different Pokemon in testing to replace certain slots, but in the end decided that these six were just really, really powerful. The idea is that you have some of the strongest attackers in the game, you have double fake out with Rillaboom and Incineroar, and you have a lot of different modes that you can go with. One is just going with offense, for example, immediately with Champau and Urshifu as a lead. One is using fake out plus Landers to disrupt your opponent and deal a lot of damage. And a third is the Calm Mind Raging Bolt Wing Condition, where you you use a combination of double fake out with Rillaboom and Cinderor, Raging Bolt with leftovers as well as that grassy terrain from Rillaboom, and a fourth Pokemon and just slowly set up Raging Bolt and just become a huge nuisance to opposing teams. So these are the exact six that I ended up bringing to the European International Championships. First of all, I just wanted to provide some context on my journey to the World Championships this year. Coming into the season, I knew I wanted to qualify and compete in Worlds, but I also knew that I'd be stretched pretty thin. I'm finishing up a graduate degree right now, and I also split time as a YouTuber, a commentator for tournaments, and a competitor as well. What this means is I knew that I had to make every event count. The way these events work is if you go and you do well enough, then you get points towards the World Championships, and in North America, if you secure 500 points, then you qualify for Worlds. So, I knew that I just would not be able to go to as many big events. For example, I knew that I had to miss the Latin American International Championships. A lot of the regionals, in fact, all the ones that were close by to me, I had conflicts with as well. And so, as a result, I wanted to make sure that I selected teams that I felt really confident in. Uh, and confident enough to just at least secure points, which is normally placing, for example, in the top 20% of the tournament. So, starting in the beginning of the season, I wanted to just play for fun, so I actually brought Spectrier to the very first regionals. This was right after the World Championships. Spectrier was a Pokemon that I loved using. I actually featured on Road to Rank, completely fell in love with the Pokemon, used it on stream at Worlds for an exhibition match against Ray Rizzo, and it was really fun, and I was able to secure 70 points right away from Pittsburgh regionals. I then took a pretty long break and didn't play at all between September all the way until December, where I went to San Antonio regionals. There, I managed to make it to day two of the competition and just missed out on the top 16, was really close to getting top 8 of that tournament, finished 21st overall in that event, and used Dragapult for that one, which was really fun. At this point, a few months of the season had already passed by, and I only secured 130 out of 500 points for Worlds, and so I was honestly getting a little bit nervous, and I told myself, okay, it's time to really start going to a couple more events and trying to get closer to Worlds. 
Between January and early February, I settled on using a team with Iron Jugulus and Blood Moon Ursa Luna. Iron Jugulus was something that my brother Brendan had created and brought to the Charlotte Regional Championships where he was able to make day two. Uh, I was already looking at Frugraph plus Blood Moon teams because that was kind of one of the most popular compositions at the time. And I really like using Pokemon that are a little bit more unorthodox and people don't have experience fighting against. And so my brother told me like he was using Iron Jugulus. I thought that it would be good to try it out since I was already using the core of Furgraf and Blood Moon at that time. Jugulus was really fun. I brought it to a local tournament, went undefeated, and ended up getting 30 points towards Worlds, and that's when I was feeling like I was picking up some momentum. And so I played a lot with this team, but I had brought it to Knoxville Regionals. I ended up getting destroyed on stream in round 9, and uh, I was just not a matchup that I was very familiar with. It was kind of like a pseudo trick room matchup that had Poison Assault that's Dark Urshifu. Uh, Dark Urshifu in particular had a really good matchup into this team and was quickly rising in popularity as well. So I used it for one more weekend uh, at Knoxville Regionals. I used it at a mid-season showdown uh, the following day and played some games for the Global Challenge as well. And in the end, actually secured about 100 points with this team, but I just felt like it maybe wasn't as consistent as I wanted it to be and it was kind of like priced into the format. Everyone was looking for ways to beat for a graph plus blood moon uh, and jugulus just felt like it was not as strong as uh, it initially was uh, the reason why jugulus was really cool at the time was because iron crown teams were everywhere and this had a really good matchup into it I then decided to switch to a Gouging Fire team, brought it to a mid-season showdown, finished second and secured 40 more points towards Worlds, but um, at this point, I you know still wasn't like very familiar with this composition. I didn't know if I wanted to stick with it for the rest of the season. So as you can see, I tried out a bunch of different teams all the way up until this point. So now we reach mid-February. I've secured about half my invite to Worlds, and I knew that I'd have a big stretch of local events in the Bay Area, where I currently reside. And so I wanted to basically just find one team, get really comfortable with it, and try to master it essentially. After the first Global Challenge, there was a Japanese team that did very well. A couple of players had brought it to the Global Challenge, and it features the six Pokemon, Urshifu, Chen Pao, Raging Bolt, Incin, Rillaboom, and Landris. A lot of top players I had talked to said that this team was just one of the most consistent teams. It said that, uh, they said that it gave them resources and opportunities to win into practically every matchup, and that's normally what I'm looking for, uh, especially because I knew that I didn't have as much time to practice and grind with teams. I just wanted something that gave me the tools to win in general. So I essentially took the team and then tried to make edits to it uh, and see what I could fix. You know, were there any Pokemon I could just, were there any EV spreads, or were there any moves that I could uh, fix up? Uh, and basically, I brought it to another local tournament, went undefeated, won with it, and I was like, okay, I think I want to stick with this team. There was one point uh, where, as you can see, I used Volcarona because at this point, two of the best players in Europe, Alex Gomez and Eric Rios, were using the same composition, but with Volcarona over Landorus. I brought it to a local tournament, and Volcarona was completely useless, and in both of those matches via Landorus, I think I would have had a much better time. Uh, and so then I was like, okay, you know what? I don't think Volcarona's for me. I'm just going to switch back to Landorus. And as you can see, I just continued to use the team after tournament after tournament. And so in March, I basically like went to a local event practically every weekend. I do feel very lucky to be in the Bay Area where there are a lot of local events and the level of competition is really high. There were at least, I think, three or four players that had gotten top eight at regionals before in the area. So I was getting really good practice at the time as well. Uh, so continued to do pretty well with it in local events, finishing first at another Premier Challenge, second at a Premier Challenge, top four at a midseason showdown, managed to secure top 64 at one of the global challenges as well so that gave me a nice bump for worlds as well uh and then at this point i knew that i just needed a top 256 finish at euic in order to secure the world's invite uh, going into euic i thought about you know trying to come up with a brand new team trying to like innovate and break the meta but uh, i knew that i would not have pretty much any other events after uic because i couldn't make it to any of the other regionals after it uh, and so i was like look i just want to take a team that guarantees tees me top 256 uh and guarantee i guess is a hard word to use because you can't really guarantee anything in pokemon but i was like would i rather use the team that i have so much experience with have so many games with over the last two months or would I rather try something new? Ultimately, I decided to stick with it, brought it to EUIC, uh, went 7-2 and two in the first day of competition, so I advanced to the second day. Going into EUIC, I knew that it, this team would not be good enough to win if I didn't make good modifications to it, and I didn't really play uh, for the two weeks before EUIC since I was on spring break, uh, and so I was like, I think this team is good enough to get me to the second day, but I think it'll be really hard to win against the best players on the second day, and that's basically what happened. I got demolished on the second day, ran into a ton of counters, like, for example, Fairy Terra, Clear Smog, Amoongus, I think I 
I played two or three of those, which was definitely unexpected, uh, and just played against a lot of opponents who knew their lines into this team really well, and this is, of course, one of the most popular teams. It won a regionals over in Brazil, got second in a regionals over in North America just a few weeks before as well, uh, but ultimately, in this kind of, like, you know, one and a half month stretch, I ended up securing 258 points with this team uh, and ultimately qualified for Worlds, and so, uh, you know, there's different approaches you can take towards trying to qualify for Worlds and in competitive VGC in general. For me, I wanted to find a team that had good, consistent uh, kind of game plans against most of the teams that you're going to run into. I wanted something that just had a lot of good fundamentals, and this team absolutely was it. So, yeah, had a really decent run with it throughout the last, you know, month and a half and ultimately qualified for Worlds. So, wanted to just kind of share the journey and uh, show how I got to Worlds. Breaking down each individual Pokemon, the first one I want to talk about is Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt is one of the primary win conditions with this team because if you are able to get a couple of Calm Mind boosts up, it can just be so difficult to deal with. This is the classic Fairy Terra Leftover set with Thunderclap and Dragon Pulse, and the EV spread is really bulky. With this spread, you survive Admin Ice Skull Crash from Champau 100% of the time unless they get a critical hit, and you also survive Earth Power from Modest Max Landorus if you get a special defense boost via Calm Mind. Some players opt for more speed on Raging Bolts here, and I actually initially had changed them more speed, but realized that it wasn't worth it, and I didn't really feel like I needed to outspeed, for example, opposing Raging Bolts. Uh, more speed can also help against, for example, Rillabooms that don't invest in speed, but at the end of the day, I felt like I was just compromising so much defense for speed that was not coming into effect in a lot of games, and so I opted to just go back to this really bulky spread. There are other some adaptations at EUIC that I saw. Uh, for example, I saw a special attack booster energy instead of leftovers. I saw fast Raging Bolt with Bug Terra as well and Thunderbolt. Uh, and so this classic set was actually countered uh, by a lot of my opponents at EUIC. Uh, like I mentioned, I ran into Fairy Terra Moongus with Clear Smog. Obviously, Fairy Terra Ferrigraph can be a nightmare for this as well. So just keep in mind that this set is amazing, but there are certain Pokemon that can just make it an absolute nightmare uh, to bring. And sometimes if you go up against those Pokemon, this actually becomes a liability. So just keep that in mind. To support the Raging Bolt, though, you've got two Fake Out users, Incineroar and Rillaboom. Fairly straightforward stuff here. The main thing I wanted to note is that with this Incineroar, you can run Will-O-Wisp over Knockoff. I was debating about it. One thing that's interesting about Will-O-Wisp is you can Will-O-Wisp your own Raging Bolt so that it can't be put to sleep by Amoongus, which is really nice. But uh, to be honest, with so many Amoonguses being Fairy Terra and uh, with me running into Clear Smog, I didn't, you know, wasn't sure how valuable that really and would have ended up being. Also, I was like, I have no experience with Will-O-Wisp on this Incineroar, and two, it's Will-O-Wisp, it's me, I sh probably shouldn't be using it. So, I ended up opting just for Classic Knockoff here. Uh, Ghost Terra is just really nice to get around Fake Out on turn one if it's a faster Fake Out and also give you immunity to fighting. Uh, and Safety Goggles here just gives you a better time into Amoongus. I will say, though, even with Incinerilla and Landers with Substitute on this team, Amoongus can still be difficult, so it doesn't mean that you just auto-win against it. But I personally liked having a little bit more speed investment to try to outpace opposing Incineroars and win the fake out war. Some players actually like using slow instant so that you can parting shot after they uh, parting shot and then drop whatever is coming out. So it's kind of a decision that you have to make. Um, but for me personally, I liked having 44 speed EVs and I thought it allowed me to outspeed most Incineroars that I ran into. Rillaboom on this team is really offensive and all, can do a lot of damage. Uh, the initial version of this team that was built by a Japanese player had very little attack investment. It was like near max HP, max special defense. But I found that people were EVing their Flutter mains to be super, super defensive. And there were times where I'd actually miss a knockout onto Flutter main, uh, which felt really, really bad. And so I just opted to get into a, a you know higher attack stat. Uh, Rillaboom does so much damage, especially when you have Chimpao dropping your opponent's defense as well. And so, yeah, ultimately just opted for a little bit more attack and a little bit more speed to try to outpace opposing Rillaboom since a lot of players were you only using for example like four speed EVs on Rillaboom. Otherwise, fairly straightforward. Uh, this Pokemon is here to do a lot of damage, give you fake out pressure, and of course set up grassy terrain which is particularly important for Raging Bull. You also have the classic Champau plus Water Urshifu combination. Uh, the Champau that the initial team featured had Stellar Terra. I just ended up opting for Ghost Terra uh, because I felt like there weren't that many situations where I was using Stellar. To be honest, I think at EUIC I actually would have preferred Stellar just because it would have allowed for me to like threaten some one-hit knockouts that I otherwise wouldn't have. For example, Stellar Ice School Crash is a really nice late game win condition, but Ghost Terra is nice because it allows you to get around normal type attacks like Fake Out and Extreme Speed. So you can really decide between both. Uh, I personally think Ice Skull Crash is necessary on this Champau because Spinner is just counterintuitive when you have Rillaboom on the team. I will say that it sucks because I've lost a lot of games to missing Ice Skull Crash. It's a really volatile move, but I think you just have to run it on this Champau. I don't think you can really afford to run Spinner, uh, especially also with Rocky Helmet still being as common as it is. But pretty straightforward Champau set here. Uh, obviously, it being Admin rather than Jolly, but Admin plus Crash just does so much damage. 
Water Urshifu also exists on this team, and I had modified, I think, the EV spread just a little bit to give it slightly more speed. Uh, with this speed, you're able to outspeed Blood Moon Ursaluna under Tailwind, which was actually a really big deal, because one of the modes that uh, those fast Ursaluna teams can go is just Tailwind, uh, Tornadus plus Blood Moon, and my response to that, I think I had one game where I just led Champ Power Urshifu and just Icicle Crash Tornadus close combat. They went Tailwind, Normal Terra, and I just knocked out both Pokemon and won the game immediately. So, wanted to make sure I had the speed bump in order to outspeed uh, Ursaluna under Tailwind and still have a decent amount of HP and defense. With this, you almost always survive the combination of normal Terra Choice Band Extreme Speed from Dragonite as well as Sucker Punch from Champau. That's a really big deal. I actually think I played against two or different three, uh, two or three different Champau Dragonite teams. And in all those, I would just go like close combat, Ice Go Crash, turn one on Dragonite. They would normal Terra. Close combat would just knock out the Dragonite. And if they didn't Terra, Ice Go Crash obviously would cover for that as well. And then in all of those scenarios, essentially, they would Terra, Ice Go Crash would then break Sash on Champau. And then I would be able to just threaten for a knockout on the subsequent turn so i actually really really valued having the hp defense investment uh you can have even a little bit more to guarantee the survival but i ended up living all of the uh close combat or sorry all the extreme speed sucker punch combos which felt really really nice and i think it was super worth it um the special defense investment is also quite nice as well here, uh, just in a variety of different matchups, especially uh, against all the common special attackers when you Terra, for example. Last one is Landorus here. This Landorus has enough EVs to survive Dark Terra Wicked Blow from Dark Urshifu, which is really valuable. And you also have max speed here. Uh, some people run Modest over Timid, but I actually really like Timid because I found that most players were using Modest on their Landorus. And so one thing that was huge when using this team was forcing opposing Landorus as a Terra. Almost everyone uses Steel or Poison Terra on Landorus, so by forcing that Terra out, I would be able to then just have a late game win condition where I'm like, okay, my Landorus is just going to outspeed you, I'm going to Earth Power you, and that won me a match for sure. So uh, you can obviously have a little bit more firepower with modest uh and i there were points where i was just considering like modest max special attack max speed i didn't know how much the hp and defense investment really mattered but uh the dark terror wicked blow is something nice to cover for and i found that a lot of people were EVing to survive even for max landris anyway so i was like i think it's fine to just take a few you know some of the evs out and put it in defense but yeah you can definitely switch between timid and modest on this set in terms of ways to use the team, a lot of flexibility, but I think the general modes that I go with is, for example, Fake Out plus really any of the Pokemon, but Fake Out plus Raging Bolt and uh, Fake Out plus Landers in particular felt really good. Either just start setting up with the Raging Bolt immediately or apply a lot of damage pressure. Rilla Landers is one of my favorite leads. Champau Urshifu I find is really good where you can just threaten with a lot of damage but also you turn out uh, and then pivot into whatever is in the back and so uh, I think the main leads I probably went with the most were Champau Urshifu, Rilla Raging Bolt, Instant Raging Bolt, Rilla Landorus and then maybe Rilla Urshifu as well um, but I think the strength of this team is that you have immense flexibility and really can pick any combination of Pokemon so that's it for a quick breakdown. In terms of things that I struggled against the most, before the European International Championships, I was losing a lot to Trick Room teams, especially those that had Blood Moon or Saluna. Blood Moon, I think, can be pretty difficult for this team to deal with just because Hyper Voice does so much damage. Generally, my way of dealing with it is a combination of like Rillaboom and Raging Bolt, try to get some Calm Minds up. And I initially had Poison Terra on Landers, but I actually changed the Steel specifically to try to resist Hyper Voice or Blood Moon, so that's one of the other modifications. It's not like you just lose against Blood Moon, but a really well played Blood Moon team can, I think, give this team a fair amount of trouble. At EUIC, I ran into a lot of different things that I struggled against. And in my losses, for example, I played against a Clefable uh, with King Gambit. King Gambit plus double redirection I found to be really difficult to deal with because, you know, Clefable in, in itself was tough. Uh, and then they also had Water Ogre Pond and Gambit can just like sword stand set up and you can't bring Incineroar as easily, especially if you don't have Will-O-Wisp, for example. But I still felt forced to bring Incineroar. Uh, and so fairy types in general, I think, can be problematic because they can give Raging Bolt trouble. And fairy Terras in particular can also be tough, right? So, uh, Furigraph is a great example. Fairy Terra Moongus with Clear Smog is one of the best ways you can deal with this Raging Bolt in particular as well. So, those are just some things to think about. Amoongus was interesting. I think I actually felt like I had a decent matchup into Amoongus going into the tournament with Rillaboom, Insane, with Safety Goggles, and uh, the Sublanderous, but I actually still lost against a fair amount of Amoonguses, and I think a well-played Amoongus can just be really tough for this team, because being able to redirect hits like Surging Strikes or just Earth Powers away uh, can be tough, especially with something like Urshifu, where if you get redirected and you just faint, it's a really bad trade, uh, and so yeah, I didn't think Amoongus was like the hardest Pokemon to fight against in practice, but uh, then I ran into more like Fairy Terra variants, like uh, instead of Water Terra, which is what I had practiced against, and then the Fairy Terra ones were just really strong in particular. And so, yeah. Uh, by the way, like 
people have modified this team to give a uh, better Amoongus at matchup. And so there's a lot of people have actually, for example, dropped Landorus for Fire Ogre Pond or Golden Go. Uh, those were trends that I knew were picking up going into UIC, but I didn't personally test it. So I kind of just stuck with it. But uh, those players, I think, did very well at UIC because they were one step ahead of the curve uh, and realized just how popular Amoongus would be with Fairy Terra going into that tournament. So that's one way you can kind of try to patch for that matchup, for example. Um, in terms of other things that I lost to in UIC, Tinglu, Dongdozo, Dragonite, Champao, like that was a composition I, that the team also had Corviknight and it was just kind of hard to deal with all the combinations of that because uh, there's so many different modes that you have to cover for. I also lost against a fast Raging Bolt that was Bug Terra with Thunderbolt uh, and that team also had Sub Urshifu which made it kind of hard for my Raging Bolt to win in a you know 1v2 scenario there uh, just because yeah even with Fairy Terra it's like uh, the Urshifu can just substitute to get around Thunderclap so I thought that was a pretty creative team. I uh, played against an Archaladon team. I think Archaladon can also be quite good into this composition uh, with Pelipper, uh, and that one gave me some trouble as well. So, yeah, I you know I think this team has the resources to win. I think in a lot of those matches, I didn't feel like I had no way to win, but I felt like it was kind of an uphill battle. And with this team being as popular as it was, people were going out of their way to prepare for it, which they really should since it was so meta. So it's not really super surprising. But yeah, those are some of the things I struggled against. And like I mentioned, uh, people had kind of taken this team to the next level by changing up slot right getting rid of landers for uh, fire ogre pond or golden go and i think those are things that are worth considering but that's it for a breakdown okay we've got an opposing balance team here they've got urshifu bolt flutter amoongus instant and rillaboom so the key differences here are obviously flutterman and amoongus we don't know what kind of urshifu type they are either uh, against Amoongus, when I see that in team preview i immediately think about bringing all of rillaboom instant and my own landerus Fairy Terra Amoongus is a nightmare for Raging Bolt to deal with, so that's something to think about as well. Bolt looks like it could be okay here, but with the combination of their own Bolt, Incineroar being able to Parting Shot, Amoongus being able to Spore, and maybe even have Clear Smog and Fairy Terra, it's actually not as good as one would imagine. Champa Urshifu is interesting here. I do think it just, like, bursts with a lot of damage immediately. I like Rillaboom as a lead here. I think there's not that much that scares it away. I'm personally thinking something like Rillaboom plus Landorus. I'm not sure I actually want Incineroar here, and if I drop that, I think it's probably Chimpao plus Urshifu in the back. Okay, I'm down for this. I think my fear is if I bring Incineroar, I don't do as much damage with the core, whereas um, Chimpao and Urshifu combined offer me a lot more offense. One interesting thing is a lot of people have been replacing Landorus with Golden Go on these team compositions, and I think Golden Go would be very interesting here because it can just potentially set up Nasty Plot. It's going to be Amoongus and Ursh, and it's going to be Water Ursh. Okay, that works for me. Uh, yeah, I think this is actually very good for us. It's a relatively free fake out and... I think I'm okay going for fake out and sub turn one. I think also worth considering just switching out Landers immediately, but Fake Out gets some chip damage onto Urshifu, and that can actually be important because that chip damage might mean that Earth Power just KOs the next turn. I get to confirm if they're a Choice Scarf or not, which is also valuable information. The question is what I'll want to do the subsequent turn, right? Like, I could go Steel Terra. Like, let's say they're Scarfed. I think one interesting play is actually Steel Terra Sub and then Wood Hammer. So then the idea is that Surging Strikes... Knocks out my initial sub that I'm setting up right now. Okay, we don't see a Terra or a Switch, and they are indeed Choice Carved. Okay, that's good to confirm. Yeah, so I think the play I want to make this next turn... Good Sludge Bomb into Riddle Boom. No Poison, which is good. So if I were my opponent now, I would actually Surging Strikes and Spore Landorus. So what I want to do is Wood Hammer into Urshifu, get that KO, Terra, and Sub. They could also close Combat Rillaboom. I think that's a possibility. But then you're letting me just, like, have Sub up on the field again. And I think that puts my opponent in a pretty tricky spot. Nice Sludge Bomb on turn one, though. Good decision to not Spore there. So the idea here is bait them into Surging Strikes into Landorus. They're not going to go for Terra here, okay. And if they weren't Scarf, I'd consider just Earth Powering Urshifu and try to knock it out, because after some chip damage, uh, our chance of KOing is a lot higher. These days, I would expect most Urshifus to survive Life Orb Earth Power from Landorus. People are running enough bulk on it.
Cool. Yep. They go for Surging Strikes. Perfect. That's what we were anticipating. So this allows us to survive. Beautiful. Okay. Sub fades. Here's the third one. 132 to 95. Yep. And now Lander sets up sub again. This room was a little bit spooky because I think, yeah, close combat into Rillaboom is definitely a possibility, but I figured we'd be... Like, I, I didn't think that was super, super likely uh, because, yeah, it's like you want to break the sub, right? Otherwise, Landers' pressure just is so much. So we get that knockout, which is perfect. Okay, they just end up sludge bombing again. That's fine, though. Main thing here is having sub going into this next turn of the game. One thing that is a little bit scary, though, is that I did not bring Incineroar, which would have been a pretty nice switch in right now. They actually may have Fluttermane, which I'm happy to see. Okay. And it's not Booster. Interesting. Okay. Uh, given that, I'm happy to just Grassy Glide it and protect this turn with Landorus. If you're not Booster, I mean, Specs makes the most sense, but then I can just bring out the Chimpow this next turn. I do think, though, Incineroar probably would have ended up being better in this, and, uh, like, for the back for me here, just because it can survive, like, a Flutter main attack and just Flare Blitz. Uh, but it's important for us to try to conserve this sub right now on Landorus. And the Steel Terror actually helps a lot, right, because we resist the Fairy-type attacks from Flutter main. So, for example, like, here, you know, I sacrifice Rillaboom, get some damage onto Flutter, and then I bring out Champau, which is quite nice. The question with Champau is whether or not I want to, like, Sucker Punch. Do I want to just Ice Core Crash Earth Power into the Amoongus slot? Okay, they end up Shadow Balling here. That's fine. And then probably just Sludge Bomb. Could be self Pollen Puff too. But, yeah. Sludge Bomb Amoongus is a really good move. A lot of top players have been using it because people realize, wow, like, having Poison into Grass-type damage is just so valuable right now. So if you're Shadow Balling, you should be Specs, meaning that you're... In kind of a tricky spot. Uh, I think we just bring out Champau now. If I were my opponent, I would actually switch Flutter out. I think, for example, Flutter out into Insin or Rilla makes a lot of sense. I think I'm happy to Earth Power this slot. I'm thinking about Sucker Punching. I think this Terraing makes sense. Terra this Spore Champau makes sense. So I'm also thinking about going for Protect here with Champau and Earth Power. Hmm. Okay, I went Protect Earth Power. They Terra, I mean, this should be Terra Moongus, right? Yep. Terra Water, okay. That's okay for now. Um, I'm curious if they went for Rage Powder. I Like, I think uh, Shadow Ball Spore here makes sense. You Shadow Ball Landorus and just Spore into Champau. Uh, but they actually did go for the Rage Powder option. Okay, I don't mind that too much. Could be worse. But it means I wasted a protect if I had attacked this turn with Champau. That would have been really nice. We get Earth Power off. Oh, that's a ton of damage. Wow. They are not specially invested, it looks like. Okay. Heal back from Citrus. I mean, the thing in this scenario is you're more or less forced to click... Rage Powder again, right? Because otherwise I can just Sucker Punch you. So the play I am thinking of making is Sacred Sword into Amoongus, and then bring out Urshifu, and then the next one I can just Close Combat, get a double KO. This is a little bit risky because they could say, you know what, I'm, like, the Rage Powder is so obvious, I'm just gonna go for Spore. But that would hard lose to something like Sucker Punch, Flutter, and Substitute, or Sucker, even Sucker Earth Power. So this is a big turn. To me, this is the most important turn of the game. Are we able to safely switch in the Urshifu? Flutter actually switches. Okay. Into Instant. Interesting. 
which implies that they're trying to go for a spore play instead here. And I would guess you spore into the Landorus slot. If they protect here, though, or like Pollen Puff, I think we're in a very winning position, but I think it should always be Spore if you're making this play. Yep. Alright, now it gets interesting, because by pivoting an instant out like this, you also have fake out pressure this next turn, so you could just fake out plus Spore. So that was a really nice turn by my opponent. I like that play a lot. Fake out plus Spore onto Urshifu makes a lot of sense right now. Hmm, dealing with sleep turns here is going to be annoying. Okay, I think I burn a sleep turn here. Do I? I don't know. It's. I think switching in Landris also works here. It should be Fake Out Spore onto Urshifu, but I haven't revealed anything about Urshifu, I guess, which I can potentially leverage to my advantage. Like, for example, if I were Mystic Water here, it'd be a very easy protect and then switch. So the question is, do you just assume I'm Choice Scarf here? They don't? Yeah, okay, that's huge. I think I actually probably just end up winning off this then. Because we just get the knockout onto Amoongus. Oh, never mind. They are very physically defensive, which makes sense because they're not especially invested. Parting shot into Landers, which is fine. Okay, so... Uh, now I can just close combat to safely knock out the Amoongus slot. However, everything is also in Surging Strikes KO range, so that's some food for thought. Because I think if you're my opponent, now you can consider switching Amoongus out into Ooh, Incineroar. Yeah, if we got that KO, I think it'd probably just be GG. You also have to commit to Shadow Ball or Moonblast. If I were my opponent, I would switch Amoongus out right now into Insin. I'm just going to Earth Power Flutter here, switch into Champau. I guess this is risky because if they make the switch into Insin here and then knock out the Lando, that could get spooky. They actually just opt for Rage Powder, okay. Nice, and it's Thousand Gleam. That's what we want to see. Okay, perfect. I actually think we win off this, then. Uh, because it should be Specs Flutter. So now I just protect Landorus, sacrifice Champau, bring out Urshifu, and then just Surging Strikes to win this game. This was a really close battle, though. Uh, I think my opponent got the better end of things with the lead matchup, and then Amoongus surviving with just the Sliver there made things a little bit tougher as well. Yeah, Water Terra also, because they were able to eliminate the Rillaboom earlier and then conserve Water Terra meant that like, they were in the perfect spot for a defensive Terra. But now I just protect and sacrifice Chen Pao. But yeah, I think that turn could have been scary because Amoongus definitely could have switched out into Incineroar. If you switch out into Incin and then you go for Shadow Ball onto the... Uh, Lander slot, I probably end up losing because then I just have to bring Urshifu back out and you just fake out Shadow Ball that turn, right? Uh, they also had the opportunity to fake out and spore into the Urshifu slot, but they decided not to go for that. Maybe out of fear that I would have Protect there. Because if I do have Protect, then I pivot in Landorus and I Protect, uh, then you actually just probably end up losing the game from there. Although I guess Amoongus did survive close combat, so maybe it's not like a immediate loss. Yeah. Okay, fake out into Landorus. Yep. There's Thousand Gleam. Yeah, now we just have Scarf first in this end game. But you can see, like, you have to be pretty particular about how you utilize Scarf, Urf Scarf Urshifu into these end games, right? Because it's, like, so useless into, uh, for example, an Amoongus with Water Terra and Rage Powder. So distributing damage onto that was really key. But now we can just Earth Power and Surging Strikes. Should just be a double KO unless they're super, super specially invested in Incineroar. I'm trying to think like what other key turns there were in this game. 
I think the turn when Fluttermane switched out was a really nice play by my opponent. Um, because they were able to get a free spore off with the Moongus. Beautiful. They're surging strikes, and Flutter just faints. So yeah, like, Scarf Urshifu is so nice in closing out games, uh, but you often have to get to a position where, like, they can't just safely switch in anything, right, or have redirection support. But I think this game was interesting because we utilized the Steel Terra Landorus in a fairly fun way. Uh, Instant actually does survive that decently well, so that looks like... If I have to guess max HP, max special defense, Instant, wow. That is impressive bulk. Okay, and they just end up flare blitzing us. Yep. Oh wait, did I get hit by a parting shot on that slot earlier? Because I switched Chan Pao out into Landorus, right? And then they end up going for parting shot that turn instead. Yeah, that I think was what happened there. This game has just been going on for so long. <laughs> but it's always fine. Like, I figured Scarf Urshifu was the perfect Pokemon to close out uh, in this game. So once we were able to eliminate Amoongus, uh, yeah, I knew Urshifu would be able to just clean things up. This is really interesting. We've got Cresselia, Ursluna, King Gambit, Torkoal, Primarina, Rock Ogre Pond. So it's a very clear Trick Room team, and the obvious lead if you want to set up Trick Room is just Cresselia, Ogre Pond. Uh, Ursaluna is really scary, I think, for Landorus. And if I bring in Sinner, obviously King Gambit can potentially capitalize off that. So the question is, let's say my opponent leads with Ogre Pond and Cresselia. What is my best response to that? They have no terrain control, so Rillaboom at least gives me Fake Out, which is good. It's kind of interesting, like, actually thinking about leading Raging Bolt, because uh, I actually think this is a matchup where we can Calm Mind a couple times. So... I'm actually thinking about Instant Bolt. Sorry, Rilla Bolt, Instant Landorus. I think Scarf Ursh in a Trick Room matchup makes not much sense. I do think Chim Pao could actually be very good here as well, right? It can survive an attack, sort of rune drop against Ursa. We could Sacred Sword it. Yeah, I feel like if I want to bring Landorus, I should probably be leading it. Otherwise, it's actually probably better to go with Chim Pao. So. I'm playing a more centered, centered game around the um, Raging Bolt because I think that, like for example, Crest, Gambit, Torkoal, Primarina even if I call mind up, it can't do that much to Bolt. So the main thing to worry about is the Ursaluna. But the question is, how are you going to get your Ursaluna in safely to threaten Bolt, right? Because Rillaboom can just wood hammer the Ogre Pond slot. One of the awkward things to dance through if you're my opponent is, okay, if you lead with Rock, Ogre, Pond, and Cresselia, you don't have Blood Moon out, and like you, in order to get Blood Moon out, you're going to either have to sacrifice something or hard switch it in. Yep, and it is going to be Ogre, Pond, and Cress as a lead. Okay, works for me. Uh, the, I mean, the play I was thinking about here is honestly just Fake Out and Calm Mind on turn one. But I do think it's interesting to consider going for Woodhammer here, because I could see this just hard switching out. Although I think hard switching is really risky, because if I just fake out Crest, then you're in a really bad spot. So I think I'll just fake out Ogre Pond here and Calm Mind turn 1. The only way they can really get around this is hard switching Ogre Pond into Ursaluna. If they go for that, then kudos. That's not an easy play to make here. Ogre Pond, by the way, also gets access to Taunt. I have... Okay, they go for Spiky Shield. That's fine. I was going to say, I have played against hard Trick Room teams that have Taunt on it specifically to deny Calm Mind on the Raging Bolts. And it helps out against, like, Amoongus, for example. But it's actually Spiky Shield and Protect. Now, Protect on Cresselia is fascinating because you normally don't have enough move slots for it, right? But I don't mind this turn too much. So we get Calm Mind number one up. Uh, follow me plus Trick Room is what you would expect now, right? Follow me, Trick Room. I could just go for a KO here. I think it's interesting to consider Woodhammer and then Calm Mind again, though. And the reason I'm going for this is because I very intentionally do not want to knock out Ogre Pond right now. I want it to stay out on the field because if Trick Room gets set up, my opponent has to burn a turn just to figure out what to deal with Ogre Pond. Yep, they just go for Ivy Cudgel here. We take less than half, which is great. I also wonder if Woodhammer Dragon Pulse would have knocked out Cress, but I don't think so given that damage. 
Whoa! Crest is a lot faster than anticipated. Okay, interesting. So, they very intentionally don't set up Trick Room here. That speed is certainly surprising. Okay. Now, I think if you're my opponent, Ivy Cudgel plus um, Trick Room makes a lot of sense. I think Bolt protecting this next turn is fairly obvious. Wow, okay. This is a very... It's like... To me, it screamed hard trick room, but the fact that Crest is faster than Bolt is definitely surprising. Um, I am down to just pivot out into... I was going to say pivot out into Incinerate. They could theoretically just Ivy Cudgel into this slot, though, which is scary. Uh, but I think pivot and instant here. Dragon Pulse feels okay. I do think the Protect on Bolt is kind of the obvious play for me to make right now, so my opponent might try to predict around that, and I get to punish them by just going for a plus two Dragon Pulse. But, yeah, definitely some surprises early on, right? Like, fast Cresselia with Protect and Moonblast. Great, they go for Follow Me now. Perfect. So I think if you're going for this, you should be trying to set up Trick Room. Yeah, looks like it. Perfect. That's exactly why I did not want to Protect Raging Bolt this turn. And with Intimidate, I felt like I was in a pretty good spot since I also have Calm Minded up a couple, couple times. Um, but this looks pretty decent for us right now. Yeah, so Bolt just gets to heal back more. I have Fake Out Pressure. This turn is really, really interesting because if you're my opponent, do you make the hard switch? Right? Because, for example, I could just fake out into this and call mind again. Alternatively, I could say just Dragon Pulse into this slot, knock off into the Cresselia slot, aim to get a double KO. But basically, it's like such a passive spot for my opponent right now that I think I can burn a turn of Trick Room. It's just a question of whether or not we think they're going to switch. Yeah, I'm actually going to go for fake out onto this and call mind again. beautiful. Uh, the one thing I was a little bit scared to see here is that they made a hard switch into Ursaluna, but I think it's, like, a really hard play. It, that's actually, it's interesting the play they opted for, though. They just double protect. That's fine by me. Like, you're only stalling out your own Trick Room right now, so that's why I was surprised to see, like, Cresselia being as fast as it is. Um, and the awkward thing for my opponent right now is that you still haven't really brought out your sweepers, and you're stalling out your own Trick Room turns, right? So, Bolt is now at plus three special attack. Of course, the main thing to still get around is going to be that Blood Moon in the back, but now, for example, I can just knock off and Dragon Pulse, and you can't switch... Or, sorry, not Blood Moon, just Ursaluna. You can't switch it in safely here on either slot. So, I'm happy to just go for Knock Off here onto Cress, and Dragon Pulse now onto Ogre Pond. Even just stalling out one extra turn of Trick Room goes such a long way. So, I don't think... Yeah, like, protecting with Cresselia there just doesn't get you very far, right? Because it's like... I don't really care about what Cresselia has to offer right now anyway, so I'm uh, pretty happy about the spot that we're in. Like, they had some surprises early on in the battle, especially with Cresselia being faster, but I think the turn where they set up Trick Room and we were able to just do so much free damage with Dragon Pulse was a really big deal, right? Uh, a lot about playing a matchup like this is... Oh, and we actually don't knock out Cresselia, okay? That's a little bit annoying. I could have split my damage the other way, where I get the knockout onto Cress with Dragon Pulse, probably, and then Flare Blitz Ogre Palm, but I wanted to knock off because it covers for a Ursaluna switch in. They just Lunar Blessing, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, like, I think the main thing to consider now is I can just go for, like, you bring out your Ursaluna, but it has to take a turn to activate with Guts, which is a really big deal. And, like, I don't think anything else on their team can deal with the Raging Ball, right? Primarina, Torkoal, King Gambit, I don't care for any of those. So, like, you have to bring out Ursa out right now. So, let's see. Nope, they bring Primarina out. Okay. That works for me. Uh, it might call mine, though, is my guess here. So, I'm gonna go for a parting shot onto Primarina, and then just Dragon Pulse into Cresselia. Like, I don't care about Primarina's damage output at all into Raging Bolt. Maybe you go for damage onto Incineroar, like, if it's something like Helping Hand Hyper Voice. That could get a knockout. I think Primarina also has the Terra right now, or go for Calm Mind. So, 
I'm fine going for Parting Shot, right? Because I still have Rillaboom in the back, which deals with Primarina. So this is one of the approaches you can take when you go up against Trick Room teams, which is like utilize Raging Bolt and like intentionally not get knockouts earlier on to stall at a couple turns of Trick Room uh, and then make them like force them basically to make a difficult decision of having to hard switch at a given point right and like it's so risky because if you hard switch like let's say earth luna comes out and just eats up a plus three dragon pulse you probably just lose the game off that right so here's the terra from pre marina it is going to be dragon terra that is not a good terra for them to have because i just dragon pulse you now <laughs> so okay that works Priscilla just protects again that's fine Okay, that's cute. They have Haze, so that helps a little bit. Uh, Haze, I imagine they like to have for Dondozo as well as Raging Bolts, but uh, like I don't mind that very much because it's like, how are you going to deal damage still, right? Cresselia is not offering very much offensive pressure if you're my opponent right now, so I can just bring out Rillaboom now. Haze is cool, though, gotta say. Wasn't anticipating that. Okay, let me set up the terrain. We've got Champa in the back, which can just Ice Gold Crash you. Dragon Pulse goes into Protect. Haze is the one move that I guess like keeps them in the game for a little bit longer, but I still don't think it gets them very far, truthfully. Because now I can just like Terra Raging Bolt and just Dragon Pulse them, right? Last turn of Trick Room. Honestly, given Lettuce the last turn of Trick Room, I also don't hate just going for Woodhammer, Terra, Calm Mind. Because I don't think Dragon Pulse gets the knockout anyway, so I might as well get a free boost while I can. Very interesting team, it's just my opponent is still put on very little pressure with actual damage, right? Like, I think they needed Ursaluna out on the field multiple turns ago. But that's why I think Ursaluna is not the easiest Pokemon to use, because the fact that it takes a turn for that Flame Orb to activate means that you're going to need to hard switch. And essentially what I wanted to do in this game was make it sure that, like, ensure that my opponent could never just switch in Ursaluna for free, right? Like, and like, if you wanted to switch in, you'd have to take a risk of eating up something like a knockoff or a boosted Dragon Pulse. So, Protect, Trick Room, Moonblast, and Lunar Blessing on Cresselia. Makes sense. Sometimes you'll see, like, I would expect Psychic Ice Beam. Um, a lot of times on Crest. But now we're gonna Terra. Beautiful, Pre Marina protects. It's like, where's the damage coming from, right? Your own Trick Room is about to expire now, and I get a free Calm Mind. So, now this next turn I can just double up pretty easily on a Pre Marina. And I think this is why, like, Trick Room compositions can be difficult to utilize, especially, uh, because you... When you all your Pokemon are relatively slow, I guess like Cresselia and Ogrepawn actually weren't that slow in this matchup, which made things a little bit more interesting. But you know, it's like the rest of the sweepers, Primarina, Torkoal, King Gambit, or Saluna, they really want Trick Room up, and uh, my opponent wasn't able to get any of them out to like actually threaten with a lot of damage, right? So yeah, uh, I am happy to just U turn into you now and Dragon Pulse into you. I wonder if there's any chance Primarina survives a plus one Dragon Pulse, maybe. But even if it does, like, what is it going to do in return, right? It's an awful spot for it offensively. And we've already seen Haze and Protect, so I would expect, like, Moonblast, Hyper Voice, but neither of those do any damage to my Pokemon right now. I think uh, Ogre Pond needed to do a little bit more damage in this game. And I think them setting up Trick Room actually, hilariously enough, like, it benefited me more than anything. Especially because they didn't want to, like, make the switch out into whatever their final Pokemon is. Uh, for example, like, the Spiky Shield Protect turn, like, kind of just cost them another free turn uh, of Trick Room and just made it harder for them to ever really get going. Okay, Primarina pivots out. Maybe it's finally Ursaluna coming in. Could be Gambit, I guess. It's Torkoal. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, I don't know. I just feel like they don't, didn't have any answer for Raging Bolt in this, given what they brought, right? Like, Cresselia, Torkoal, um, Primarina... I'm shocked they didn't go with Ursaluna. I think Ursaluna is, like, perfect for a matchup like this. Because now I just, yeah, it's very free to just Dragon Pulse everything. Like, Bolt should just knock out everything from this point onwards. So, I guess that explains the lack of a switch into Ursaluna earlier, right? But I am quite surprised to see Torkoal, just because Torkoal's Raging Bolt matchup is really subpar. I'm wondering if my opponent thought, like, I wouldn't want to bring Raging Bolt because they had um, Ursaluna on their team. But... 
even with Ursaluna, I still like Bolt in a matchup like this because they have only one really specific lead combo they can go with in order to like try to set up Trick Room, for example. And yeah, they just never really put on pressure with damage here at all. But like I said, I was playing this whole game with the assumption it would be Cresselia Ogre Pond lead with Ursaluna in the back. And my goal was to basically just say, okay, well, I can't really deny you Trick Room, but even if you set up Trick Room, I'm going to make sure that your Ursaluna can't just like freely sweep everything. Uh, and I'm going to try to stall out as many turns of Trick Room as I can before it actually hits the field. But yeah, pretty free to just U-turn and Dragon Pulse right now. There's really not much they can do from this spot. There's just never really damage pressure in this game, right? So, you turn on to Crest, and now we have Protosynthesis boosted. Calm Mind boosted Dragon Pulse into Primarina. So, pivot out. Yeah, in, this, in, the, in the long run, we didn't really end up taking any damage, but I do think the four Pokemon we brought were probably the best to deal with this matchup. Mm, Landorus, I think you could make a pretty good argument for, though, over Champau just as a switch in into, like, ground type attacks. Uh, but I like the idea of Champau just for, like, late game offense, if I can stall out the Trick Room. I think the tricky thing about Landorus is, now it's confirmed that my opponent's Cresselia doesn't have Ice Beam, but a lot of Cresselias do carry Ice Beam, and it makes it that much more difficult for Landorus to just come out uh, and feel comfortable in a battle. Okay, we've got Tornadus, Glamora, Urshifu, Water Ogre Pond, Flutter, Chiyu. This is a team comp that... I feel like isn't as popular in the current month, but a lot of people were using this maybe a month or two ago. The idea is you just have a lot of hyper offense, right? Uh, Power Herb, Meteor Beam, Glamora is super powerful. Flutter Chiyu as a lead is really oppressive. Flutter with anything on this team can be led. Uh, it's often going to be the speed booster energy set with Icy Wind. Could also be choice specs, but I would generally expect speed booster. So against this, I think Assault Vest Rillaboom is actually really important because we can fire Terra in front of Flutter Chiyu. So I don't mind leading that. It also gives me Fake Out Pressure, which is quite nice. I think something like Rillaboom plus Champau is intriguing to me because with Champau I can just Icicle Crash Tornadus. Probably don't want to bring Incineroar. Raging Bolt is actually kind of intriguing to me here as well because it could potentially set up with Calm Mind. I'm actually thinking about leading it. Don't think I want Incineroar. Landers is okay, but I have to stall out Tailwind, which is what makes it really tricky. So I don't mind Rillaboom, Bolt, Chimpow. And then for the last one, it's Scarf, Ursh, or Landorus. I think I like Ursh a little bit more because if they don't actually manage to set up speed control because they think they don't need it in the early game, uh, Urshifu can roll over my opponent's team. Being able to thread in Chiyu as well as Glamora for a knockout with Surging Strikes is really nice. And we can also Scarf U-Turn into Water Pond. So, let's see. I think it's very likely I consider just tearing Rillaboom uh, on turn 1 of this battle. Like, I would actually be okay seeing something like a Flutter Chiyu lead, because one thing we could do is just fire Terra, Wood Hammer into the Flutter main, and then just protect with the Raging Bolt. It's going to be Ogre Chiyu. Okay. Ogre Chiyu is interesting because the Raging Bolt is actually in a really good spot here. And I generally would anticipate Ghost Terra Chiyu here on turn 1. Because, like, the obvious play we could make is to just simply fake out Chiyu and then Calm Mind here. Uh, Fairy Terra on this is valuable to an extent... We have a lot of options. Like, I could just Terra here immediately. I would expect Ghost Terra, personally. This might seem crazy, but I actually want to just Wood Hammer Chiyu here and Calm Mind. I think Bolt is in a really nice spot right now. Chiyu actually switches, okay. So I was expecting maybe Ghost Terra, but the switch here is also fine. They go into Tornadus, which I'm okay with. I think Raging Bolt is already looking really good right now. And Ogre Pond Spiky Shields, cool. So, like, that play was obviously a little bit risky, but I figured, okay, if Chiyu commits the Ghost Terra early on, I mean, we are Assault Vested with Rillaboom, so you might not even get the knockout, right? Uh, and I do think Ghost Terra there is something like I could see players going for, but uh, Raging Bolt now is just in a fantastic spot, right? I get a free Calm Mind immediately, and I think that's awesome. So this next turn... We can pressure the Ogre Pond slot. I think Ogre switching out into Flutter makes sense to me. 
I'm actually happy to just wood hammer that slot. Wood hammer and calm mind again is actually pretty interesting here. But I think dragon pulsing here is also probably fine. Yeah, that covers for any switch, honestly. Beautiful. Ogre switches. So maybe you bleak wind storm here, but I should just be able to get a knockout onto whatever's coming in. It's going to be Chiyu, so happy to eliminate that. That's one of the bigger threats to Rillaboom, obviously. Beautiful. And they just taunt. Amazing. I'd say this game has gone near perfectly so far. Since we are able to just get so much free damage across the board. Maybe Chiyu actually survives this. Let's see. It took a little bit less from Woodhammer than I would have liked. But plus one Dragon Pulse onto them. And that's a knockout. Beautiful. So we're off to a really quick start right now. And the awesome thing about Raging Bolt and why I really like bringing it in matchups like this is because Tornadus just does not thread in Raging Bolt at all other than being able to taunt, right? It's like your Bleak Windstorms do really no damage at all. So Ogre Pong comes out. Could see it going for a Spiky Shield here. I personally don't mind going for Wood Hammer onto Ogre Pond and then just Thunderclap onto Tornadus. Okay, Ogre Pond Spiky Shield, yep. And I mean, if you try to attack right now, you're just going to get KO'd. Beautiful. So it's like, obviously with that, I risk Ogre Pond going for Follow Me. But if Ogre Pond goes for Follow Me, then Wood Hammer just goes into the Ogre Pond slot, right? Like, your Bleak Wind Storm isn't going to knock out my Rillaboom. So that's why I was willing to make that play. So we're up 4-2. Ogre also just protected, so I can just double up into that slot this next turn. So let's see what their final Pokemon is. Urshifu would make sense here. Yep. Cool, that works for me. And it's Dark Urshifu, so Raging Bolt going for Fairy Terra here should be very powerful. I mean, we're still up 4-2, so we're in a very good spot. I think I'm happy to just Grassy Glide into Ogre Pond, Terra here, and Dragon Pulse. Yeah, like, the goal was to just knock out Ogre Pawn, uh, since it just spiky shielded, so it's fairly easy to double into that slot. And Glide plus Dragon Pulse covers for everything, right? If Ogre Pawn Terra's, then you just take so much damage from Glide, and then Dragon Pulse finishes you off. And I also want to click Grassy Glide here, just because I'm worried about, yeah, Dark Terra or Shifu Wicked Blow just knocking out Rillaboom. So, I think this game has basically gone super, super well, and like turn one alone, I think my opponent probably felt a little bit scared of Fake Out, but I think, yeah, the Raging Bolt here being led just applied so much pressure, and after getting a Calm Mind, there's like so little my opponent can do, so this is perfect. They go for Follow Me, the idea is that Glide plus Dragon Pulse should get the knockout onto that, and then it's just a uh, 3v1 against the Urshifu. So, here's Dark Terra, Wicked Blow. Cool, they target Rillaboom, 174. We actually end up surviving that as well, which is quite nice. I was expecting a KO. Dragon Pulse comes out, and the Ogre Pawn faints. And that's where this single Calm Mind really makes all the difference, right? After getting that boost, I'm able to just get that knockout onto Chiyu, get that knockout onto Ogre Pawn, whereas if we didn't Calm Mind, they would have likely survived with a little bit of health. So, yep, we can just Grassy Glide and Dragon Pulse now. And Fairy Terror Raging Bolt is just so good in this matchup, so... They're going to go for that Sucker Punch onto the Rillaboom, eliminate that, but Pulse is going to bring them low, and then we just bring out Scarf or Shifu. I think Rilla plus Bolt was just the lead that felt really, really good here. And I think the things that could scare me a little bit with this combination include things like Glamora, Flutter, Chiyu, like any combination of those. Uh, but with the lead that my opponent had, I mean, the Chiyu applied pressure, right? But um, with the Salt Vest on our Rillaboom, as well as Raging Bolt being able to Calm Mind, like... Uh, this is what makes Raging Bolt so powerful. If you just give it one Calm Mind boost, it can really dominate the battle. So we bring out Ursh, and just go for Aqua Jet and Dragon Pulse here. And that'll finish there, Ursh, if you will. But yeah, I mean, Raging Bolt was definitely the MVP of this game, right? It was able to knock out the Tornadus with Thunderclap, it was able to knock out Chiyu with Dragon Pulse, it was able to knock out the Ogre Pong with Dragon Pulse, and then bring Urshifu down to 1 HP as well. So, uh, Calm Mind, Assault Vest, or sorry, Calm Mind, uh, Fairy, Terra, Raging Bolt is just an incredible Pokemon. And that's one of the reasons why this kind of balanced team has been so powerful. Now, a lot of top teams are going out of their way to counter Raging Bolt, right? So I've run into things like Fairy Terra, Clear Smog Amoongus, for example. Fairy Terra Ferrigraph is also quite annoying for this Bolt to deal with. But uh, against a team that doesn't have like super good definitive answers, it can just completely run over matchups. Okay, we've got a rain team here uh, with Archaladon, Pelipper, Thunderous, Rillaboom, Champau, and Basket Legion. Very cool. 
I think our Chalodon's a pretty difficult Pokemon for this team to go up against. So we'll have to be careful about fighting it. Thunderous is also pretty spooky with the Eerie Impulse. What's interesting is they can only have one Focus Sash on their team, so only one of Pelipper and Champau can actually carry it. Thunderous having Rain Dance would make a lot of sense to me here. I'm thinking something like Incineroar plus Raging Bull. I think the problem is, is if Thunderous has Eerie Impulse, and in a closed Team Sheet environment, not knowing whether or not it has it, I think actually causes a lot of issues. Mm. I think we should be bringing Champau. I actually almost want to lead Champau because it puts on more pressure into Thunderous. So something like Champau plus Landorus or Raging Bolt. Rilla in the back. I want Rillaboom because otherwise Basket Legion I think becomes kind of spooky. I think Rilla Champau could work here. As a lead actually. But I'm also thinking about leading Raging Bolt, Rilla in the back. It's just, I'm like now also thinking about Incineroar because they do have a lot of physical attackers. But Landorus I kind of feel like I need against Archaladon. It's tricky. I think this is actually a really scary matchup. Uh, Eerie Impulse Thunders is something I struggled a good amount against when practicing with this team. And that's because Landorus and Raging Bolt both really don't love eating up an Eerie Impulse. So that's part of the reason why I'm leading Chen Pao here immediately to just put on pressure with Icicle Crash. Uh, I think Chen Pao is offensively very good into my opponent's team. I think Urshifu is also interesting to consider, but there's so much that could go wrong, right? They could Thunder Wave us. Uh, we are almost forced to Terra defensively, which also doesn't feel great. It's actually going to be Pelipper and the Basket Legion. Okay, I don't mind that. Huh. Not the lead I would have expected, but one that I don't mind very much here. I mean, I have pressure with Sucker Punch here immediately. Thinking about Calm Minding... Tempting to just go straight for Sucker Punch here and Calm Mind on turn one. What can they do? Protect here and then just attack Chan Pao. So the other thing I'm thinking about is actually Protect here and Calm Mind. I don't hate that. I'm just a little bit scared. It's like Basky Legion decides to like go for like Defensive Terra, Pelipper switches, which is fine by me. Okay, what do they bring out? Rillaboom. Okay. Uh, so Raging Bolt's looking quite nice right now. I think if you're making this play, you have to Terra Basket Legion, or maybe you have, like, you can survive a Sucker Punch. Okay, they just protect. That works. Although, man, I, I thought about Ice Go Crashing into the Pelipper slot, and that would have been a really sick play, but Free Call Mind is always appreciated, so I'll take that. Okay, very nice. I think this next turn now, I can just protect Raging Bolt, pivot Champau out into Rillaboom. I don't mind that, I think. I could also just stay in here, right? For example, one play I could make is actually Ghost Terra. To get around... Fake Out. Huh. It's actually worth considering here, I think. Because I don't want to Terra Raging Bolt. It becomes, I become weaker to Basket Legion. Okay. Terra, Ice Skull Crash... Just eliminate Rillaboom. Uh, and I'll Dragon Pulse in case, like, Basket Legion wants to switch. No Terra from their end, okay. If you're not tearing here, I think you should be Fake Out onto the Raging Bolt. I don't know, maybe it was con worth considering switching to Rillaboom and just protecting there. I think that play is also fine. Nice! They Fake Out into Chen Pao. Beautiful. Yep, they tried to double up onto it. Sick. This is where Ghost Terra is so handy. So, okay, that's awesome. Although I'm surprised they risked the Thunderclap onto Basky Legion, but this should be a double knockout, I think. Their Life Orb, yep. Ice Go Crash does not miss. Beautiful. That hits the Rillaboom for a one-hit KO. And Dragon Pulse here should get the knockout as well. And I went for Dragon Pulse there just in case they try to go for like a Terra with Basky Legion that allows them to resist Thunderclap. I don't even know what Terra Basky Legion wants to run, but yeah, this is an amazing start to the game, right? Like they're down to their final two Pokemon. Pelipper's in a pretty awkward spot as well. We still have Rillaboom. 
uh, applying pressure as well. And, like, they haven't set up Tailwind, which is big, right? So, like, Archaladon was the Pokemon I was mainly worried about, but then Landorus can just Earth Power or Sludge Bomb into it, right? Which is huge. And it indeed is my opponent's final Pokemon. Okay. So they bring out Pelipper and Arch. I mean, with the special attack boost and special defense boost, I'm thinking about just clicking Sacred Sword. Although this going for Terra makes a lot of sense, right? Terra Fairy immediately here. So I'm thinking about doubling up onto Pelipper right now. Pelipper could protect, but it could also Tailwind, which scares me a little bit. Uh, I'm happy to go for... Just Ice Skull Crash into it and Dragon Pulse. Okay, here's the Terra. Should be Terra Archaladon into Fairy is my guess. Huh? Oh! Okay! Terra Steel Pelipper, that's really neat. That's actually quite scary for me. Oh man, I actually thought about clicking Sacred Sword there to cover for missing, so that actually would have worked out pretty well for us. Uh, they're going to go for Electro Shot, which is fine. But yeah, that is a really nice Steel Terra on Pelipper. Because the other play I wanted to make was just Sacred Sword Dragon Pulse into our Chaladon. Uh, but the problem there is if they end up going for Fairy Terra on Arch, right? I assume they're going to want a Tailwind now with Pelipper. Alright, that makes this game substantially more interesting. Very cool. There's Dragon Pulse. Almost get that knockout still. Oh, and they actually flinch from Icicle Crash. Okay, unfortunately for them, I think that probably just seals up the game. Because I can now just bring out the Rillaboom. And I can just fake out plus Dragon Pulse. Fake out. Pulse. I mean, even if Pelipper set up Tailwind there, I think I'd be making the same play here anyway. And we still have Landers in the back to deal with our child on as well. But that's a nice Terra by my opponent. I should have considered Steel Terra specifically. Okay, we fake out our child on. I'm fine giving it a stamina boost because we're mainly using special attacks to deal with it anyway right now, right? So one thing to note here, as you can see, is that I'm faster with Raging Bolt against the Pelipper. So it's pretty easy to just get this KO. Given the lack of Protects and the defensive Terra, I'm going to guess they just don't have Protect, right? Like, a lot of Pelippers like to run... Moves like Weather Ball, Hurricane, Tailwind, Wide Guard. And then, so if you run that, you obviously don't have room for Protect. Uh, I, now I'm happy to go for U-Turn into Arch and Protect with Bolt. And with Landers in the back, we should be very well positioned to win the game. But because they got that Electroshot boost, I do want to pivot out here. So Bolt will Protect... Okay, perfect. They Draco into us. Excellent. Now we U-turn and get Landris in. And now with Landris out, it's just like I have two things that threaten in our Chaladon, right? So you can't Terra. Earth Power should be a two-hit knockout onto them. Uh, and I just Earth Power Dragon Pulse. The only thing that could have been scary with this turn is if they ended up being slower than Rillaboom for some reason. And then like I U-turn out and then you Draco the Landris as I switch in. But to be honest, if you end up doing that, then our Ch or Raging Bolt just kind of outpaces you because then you're at minus two special attack. So, yeah. This is exactly why I did want to bring Landers, though, because otherwise our Chaladon is kind of annoying to deal with. So, now we can just Earth Power and Dragon Pulse. And you can't knock out both Pokemon here. So, there's Earth Power. Oh, it's actually a one-hit knockout, so they're not Assault Vest then, I guess. Which is surprising. I'm curious what item they're running. It could be... Power Orb with Electro Shot still. That's something that people like using. And maybe like the Assault Vest was on Rillaboom. But uh, to me, the pivotal turn in this game was when I just got a double knockout onto Rillaboom plus the um, Basket Legion. Definitely wasn't expecting to get a double KO there. And my opponent just gave it to us. And that just accelerated the game super, super quickly. So uh, yeah, like, I was curious how much Basket Legion with Life Orb, Wave Crash, and Chim Pao dropping the defense and rain being up like i think that wave crash into our raging bolt actually would have done a ton of damage so something like fake out plus the wave crash into bolt i think could have made this game a lot scarier but that turn they just went all in on trying to knock out champau and we got to punish them really heavily that's also why i was thinking like maybe i don't want to just switch into rillaboom and protect because it's a little bit passive and rillaboom actually would have taken a lot of damage and then they had the p possibility of for example like protecting rillaboom pivoting into our chaladon so saw an opportunity there opportunity that turn took it and it ended up working out great Whoa, that's a Mianxiao. Okay, 
I kind of expect to see that more in Regulation G, now that Calyrex Shadow Rider is back, but... Mianxiao, Heatran, Tornadus, Galarian, Moltres, Flutter, and Urshifu. Interesting. Huh. I feel like this should be a very good Raging Bolt game. Like, I immediately look at, you know, things like Tornadus and Galarian, Moltres, and I think Bolt can just kind of set up in front of those. So I'm okay leading Bolt here. I think Mianxiao plus, like, Flutter is maybe a lead we want to respect. Mianxiao Flutter is probably the lead I'm most worried about. Uh, so maybe I want to lead with something like him protect, like Chen Pao. I like Rillaboom here to switch it into Flutter. If it's Dark Urshifu, we can punish them. And I think I like Urshifu. Incineroar doesn't feel great in this matchup. Not really much to intimidate. And Landorus is kind of useless into things like Galarian Moltres. I think if they didn't have Tornadus, I'd be more inclined to bring Landorus because then their speed control's a little bit more lacking, but with Tornadus out on the field, I just find it difficult for Landorus to be able to do that much. So, let's see. They're gonna lead Mianxiao and Flutter. Yep, that was one of the leads I was talking about. Okay. The one thing I'll say that like, can make this a little bit tricky is that Mianxiao does get access to Faint. So you theoretically could Faint on turn one. Which would actually be very interesting here. Hmm. Alternatively, you could obviously just fake out. I'm actually really worried about Faint, which is kind of crazy to say. So I might Terra here immediately, Calm Mind, and Ice School Crash. The logic behind this play is... This, you can't go for something that covers for all of this, right? So, like, maybe you fake out Champau Dazzling Gleam, but then I get a Calm Mind up, and that's a trade that I actually don't mind taking. Maybe if you try to go for Faint, for example, I can punish you super heavily with this play. Uh, but I actually think one of the best reasons to use Mianxiao is because of Faint, and so I want to cover for that. See? Like that. Ah, uh, they are faster with Flutter, though. Okay, that's good information, though. Uh, that's why we Terra the Raging Bolt in this position. So like I said, I'm happy to just get a Calm Mind up for free here. Although, I think one play I could have made was switch out the Champa out into Rillaboom. The problem with that is I'm vulnerable to just, like, fake out into Bolt immediately. But I'm happy to just get a Calm Mind to start the game. Cool. This allows me to now position in... I mean, I don't mind going to Scarf Urshifu here, right? Because we can just Surging Strikes. Dragon Pulse. That works for me. I thought about Rillaboom as well, but I think being able to just strikes the Flutter slot right now is quite tempting. And they have no switching into it, really. I'm down to Dragon Pulse into it and Surging Strikes, because this covers for any switch. Alternatively, I'm thinking about Calm Mining with Raging Bolt again right now. Because th the team here was kind of designed to try to play around bolt it's just like i could see flutter switching into urshifu and if you're able to knock out urshifu with this that would be incredible so i'm still down. yeah i'm down for this okay they just stay in nice uh sometimes it can be scary going up against flutter because some people ev flutter to actually survive this surging strikes but you need so much hp and defense investment and given that they outsped our chien pao it's kind of hard for you to have enough investment to be faster than admin pao but then also have enough hp and defense investment so we get the surprise with Scarf there. They close combat here into Urshifu. It's a lot of damage, but we should KO them unless they're Focus Sash. I do expect Focus Sash here most of the time, though, so. Ew! That's really cute. Wow, Eject Pack. Okay, well, that's another way for us to not knock you out. You just switch out. Very cool. And they bring out Heatran. Nicely done. Okay. Dragon Pulse actually does pretty meaningful damage there. They're leftovers. That's fine. So now you get Mianxiao back in. They haven't Terra'd yet either. So for example... But like, it's awkward because if Heatran Terra's, then Raging Bolt's probably going to do more damage to it, right? If you go for like a Water or Grass Terra, Dragon Pulse just does neutral damage. Or even Thunderclap does super effective damage if you're Water Terra. So they bring Mianxiao back in. That's fine. Kind of just eliminates the Mianxiao right now. I don't mind switching out into Rillaboom right now. Uh, I do think here it's worth considering just clicking Surging Strikes and Dragon Pulse onto Mianxiao. But 
I'm not that worried about the offense that they have to offer right now. Between Leftovers and Grassy Terrain, like, Bolt is just a monster. And yeah, they do go for Fake Out into Ursh. Perfect. And they went for Earth Power. Even better. Nice. Yeah, so Rillaboom's the perfect Pokemon to switch in there. We Dragon Pulse, Mian Shao. And that's a one-hit knockout. This Raging Bolt is just a beast. Raging Bolt was always the win condition coming into this matchup, though, because if you look at their team, they just had, like, very little that threatens a Fairy Terrible, and, like, it was pretty difficult for them to deny Calm Mind as well, so. Now we have Fake Out Pressure, which is really nice. I can just Fake Out Calm Mind again. The Bolt is just going to win against Heatran pretty easily because of Calm Mind. We're healing back so much as well, so. Yeah, this Raging Bolt is just such an amazing Pokemon. So let's see what they bring out. That's Galarian Moltres. Okay, works for me. Uh, I'm happy to just Calm Mind right now again, and then Fake Out into Moltres. Uh, Rillaboom's actually not going to be able to do very much for me at this point in the game, but what I wanted to see this turn was to just bait out a Terra, so I'm very happy to see Terra come out here. It's going to be all Moltres, Poison maybe. Oh, it's actually Steel. Steel is really bad news for them, to be honest, because it means that close combat from the Urshifu is just super effective against both of these now, so I'll gladly take that. Okay, Moltres faints. They're just going to Heat Wave. That's fine. 168 down to 60. And Bolt just Calm Minds again. Yeah, and the thing is, because they're just using special attacks, like, I kind of just outpace them, right, with the damage that I have to offer. So, Moltres heals back. Rillaboom heals back. Because Rillaboom heals back here, it means we actually don't want to U-turn in case they end up, like, Earth Powering that slot. Because I don't want to just lose Urshifu. Uh, Rillaboom's not going to do much for me at this point in the game anyway, so we kind of just want to sacrifice it. I think this next turn, I kind of expect Heatran to protect. I'm down to just double up onto Moltres. Because if I were my opponent, I would probably go for Protect and then Nasty Plot. So I'll just Dragon Pulse here. and I, I mean, I could Call Mind again, actually. I don't hate that. Call Mind again, and then just Wood Hammer. I think it's fine, too. Oh! They have Terror Blast. Okay, that's cute. 208 down to 146, though. So really not that much damage. We Wood Hammer... That's a lot of damage, wow. That should just win us the game, because now with that, Heatran knocks out Rillaboom, we bring out Urshifu, close combat just knocks out the Galarian Moltres, and then Bolt just wins 1v1 against Heatran. They did get a crit there, but the crit needed to be on the um, Raging Bolt. And yeah, like this is such a dream scenario for Bolt, because we're just up against multiple special attackers. So, With them being Steel Terra, Urshifu should just close out this game. Great. We continue to heal back. Like, Grassy Terrain plus Leftovers is just so nuts, right? Like, Raging Bolt gets the heal back so much damage. And we're getting free boosts. So, Arshifu gets to come out. That was a cool turn one, though. They did end up having Faint, and they did end up being faster than us. So, might have just been Timid. Or maybe it was a Speed Tie. Uh, I'm happy to just Thunderclap now, and Close Combat to knock out Moltres. Yeah, they end up forfeiting. So... Uh, Raging Bolt, once again, just in a matchup where there's not much to stop it from Calm Minding, and there's not too much immediate offense. The best offense they had to threaten was Flutter Main, right? But basically, on turn one, I forced my opponent to make the decision, okay, you can only knock out one, or, like, or threaten one of the two Pokemon, and Champau obviously exerts a lot of pressure into Flutter, so trading Champau just for that one Calm Mind alone, in my opinion, was totally worth it, and as a result, they just had very few answers into Fairy Terra, uh, in the late game, right? If you think about it, it's Mian Xiao, it's Flutter Main, it's Galarian Moltres, and it's Heat like none of those threaten Raging Bolt even before Calm Mind very much, and then after Calm Mind, it just takes over the game. Okay, we're up against Ting Lu Dong Dozo. I did lose against one of these teams in the first game of day two of EUIC. Part of what led to that loss was them having Corviknight, which caused a lot of issues. Uh, so there's no Corv here, which is nice. But what's tricky is there's a lot of different leads to cover for, right? Dragonite Champao is one, Dong Dozo plus Ting Lu is another. Gouging Fire stuff can be annoying as well. What's interesting is that Raging Bolt can be okay into the matchup if you're able to eliminate Ting Lu. Like, normally the idea is to prioritize Ting Lu terroring and then go from there. And it's normally going to want to poison Terra. So, like, one approach I've gone with is leading something like Champao plus Urshifu, having Landorus in the back. Lando is interesting because you can U-turn out, bring out Landorus. One other thing to consider in this matchup is that Ghost Terra on Champao allows you to break out of the uh, trap from Sand Tomb plus Yawn, which can be valuable. But, to be honest, all six Pokemon can work here, so it's a question of figuring out which ones to bring. Like, I don't love Incineroar here, generally, because Intimidate can 
Like, it's not that good, but if they go with the gouging fire stuff, it actually becomes infinitely more valuable. So, it, it's tricky. I, like, I don't think there's a clear definitive four to go with here. I might go with Back Bolt, to be honest, because this covers for gouging fire stuff. Uh, Back Bolt also allows me to Dragon Pulse Dragonite as well. But dropping Incineroar here can be really risky because if they commit to gouging fire stuff, that's really scary. They could also just lead Ting Lu Dozo here immediately, and that can be kind of annoying. Uh, I think one of my lessons when playing against Ting Lu Dozo with this team is it's pretty good to actually prioritize knocking out Don Dozo. Which is counterintuitive, because normally you want to try to just, you know, force the tear out of Team Lu and then put on pressure into it. But knocking out Dozo can be really good, because otherwise Yawn is just a huge pain. I lost Game 3 against Team Lu Dozo, because it was able to just put everything to sleep. But it's going to be Gouging Fire Dragonite, okay? So they're committing to the very physical part of their team. Interesting, okay. So how do I want to play against this? Could see this tearing immediately. Bolt is going to be very important against Gouging Fire. This is normally Choice Band or Assault Vested. Like, I'm thinking here I want to close combat and Ice Cold Crash into this slot. But they could normal tear at E speed, like double up onto Chien Pao. Which is spooky. Ah, uh, decisions, decisions. I'm going to close combat protect here. Mm, they didn't Terra, though, which doesn't feel great. Okay. It is E-speed, though, so that makes me think they're also going for Heat Crash there. Okay, breaking swipe. I guess that's fine, but I could have gone for Surging Strikes in that spot instead. I think my main question here is, do I want to commit the Terra to Chien Pao to Ice Cold Crash Dragonite? Because that works out for this turn, but then it means I can't Terra Bolt, which feels bad, because Terra Bolt is so good into gouging. I'm going to switch into Landorus for sure here. It might be worth it, though, honestly, just to knock out Dragonite. Because otherwise, I'm really worried about the Heat Crash Extreme Speed play. Okay, I'm going to do it. They could switch Dragonite out here, which would be a great play by then. I was hoping they would normal Terra turn one and try to go all in. Because I'm not sure Extreme Speed plus Breaking Swipe actually would have knocked out Chien Pao there. Yeah, they switch. Ah, okay, so this turn is not great for us. They bring out Dozo, though. Could be worse, I guess. Like... This late, uh, the Ghost Terra is still valuable in the long run, uh, and now I pressure with Earth Power onto Gouging. But yeah, it's just frustrating because I could have made this play on turn one. Okay, yeah, they go for Howl. Here's the problem though, now they can just Heat Crash into Landorus. Which I don't love. Yeah, maybe the close combat turn was ambitious. I should have just surging strikes into gouging. He crash into Landers is a really strong play. I think I want to switch into Bolt then and Ice Cold Crash into gouging. Dozo also now becomes a huge nuisance with Yawn. So uh, that, that's part of what makes fighting against this team comp so difficult. You have so many different modes, right? Uh, for example, Champao Dragonite lead, Ting Lu Dozo lead, Gouging Fire Dragonite, Gouging Fire Dozo, Gouging Fire Ting Lu. I don't like my prioritization here, though. I think, yeah, I should have focused a little bit more on just eliminating the Gouging because I didn't bring Incineroar in this matchup. Okay, they go for Burning Bulwark. I, mean, I guess that's fine. They're probably going to click Yawn then with Dozo. Maybe Wave Crash into, uh... Landorus, which I'd actually be okay with, because then I can double up onto Gouging next turn. 
But yeah, it's gonna be yawn. Ugh. This is quite annoying to deal with, but I think I might just eat up the sleep here anyway, because I really want to get rid of the uh, gouging fire right now. This would be a great spot for gouging to go for fairy terror if they have it. But I think I'm still just gonna dragon pulse and icicle crash here. Yeah, there's Terra. Oh, this is tricky to fight against. Fairy? Yep. I mean, Landers can sludge bomb it now, but the problem is, I think, like, gouging just kind of KOs everything. I guess I can just bring out Urshifu and Surging Strikes it, at least. But yeah, I think I needed to get damage on a Gouging on turn 1 of this game. That does such little damage as well. Dragon Pulse fails. They should yawn again here. Yeah. And by not bringing in Sinnoh, like, Gouging just becomes more difficult. So, ah, uh, like, if I could replay this game, if on turn 1 I just went, like, Surging Strikes onto Gouging, Protect with Champa, I think this game would look pretty differently. So, I think my prioritization was not the best in this battle. How do I get out of this? You just clicked Yawn onto me here. We're probably gonna just break and swipe again. Probably break and swipe and Yawn again, to be honest. I'm gonna just Ice Gold Crash here. Yep. The only way I can see myself winning this is if... They yawn here, I fall asleep with Champau, I bring out Urshifu, Surging Strikes knocks out the Gouging, and then I switch Champau out into Landorus. But they just Heavy Slam. Oh, we do survive though, okay, nice. Could have been a Wave Crash there. But yeah, Gouging was just a huge problem for me in this battle. Uh, if I brought Rillaboom as well, that may have given me a better shot over Landorus here, but I like Landorus because otherwise, like, Ting Lu becomes such a big problem. So, yeah, this is a particularly tricky matchup in best of one. I'm gonna just Surging Strikes gouging here. I don't even think it's worth switching out Champ Pao. Gouging switches. Good play. Back out into Dragonite, maybe? Yeah. I mean, the upside with that is you do give up your booster energy. I just don't think I'm beating this Dondozo in the long run because I just didn't really bring enough offense into it now that Raging Bolt has fainted. Strikes actually does a ton of Dragonite there, at least. And they just Heavy Slam. Maybe a switch there actually would have been worth it then, given that that was my opponent's play. Uh, I don't think we're out of it quite yet, but the problem now is you can just Extreme Speed Wave Crash into Landorus switch in. And Surging Strikes Earth Power is not going to knock out Dondozo. I think if I want any shot at winning, I'm going to Surging Strikes and Protect here and just hope that they aggressively target Landorus. If you're my opponent, it's I think you can just Extreme Speed Yawn into Urshifu, and if you do that, the game's just basically over. So since I'm so far behind, I feel like I need to make this kind of play. But yeah, to me, this is one of the hardest teams to fight against in the format right now because there's so much flexibility. And like, the question is, what would I even do differently? I'm not sure Incineroar, like, skews the matchup that uh, much better for us. Yeah, so they e-speed into Urshifu correctly. But basically, the win call I'm looking for here is that they, like, double... Uh, sorry, yeah, they end up wave crashing to land. I mean, Surgeon Strike just does such little damage there. Yeah, that's not good. At least yawn into Landorus, but... Yeah, I think what hurts in this game is that turn one. They didn't go for a defensive Terra with Dragonite, and they just went for e-speed plus... Breaking Swipe, so if I just clicked Icicle Crash, like Surging Strikes, I would have been in really good shape if I just Terra Ghosted turn 1, so maybe I should have just done that instead. I mean, Strikes Earth Power is not even going to come close to the knockout here, but I guess I can hope for a crit with Earth Power. Actually, Aqua Jet, okay, that is interesting if somehow Earth Power and Strikes actually does enough damage, but I don't think it will. My guess is Dondoza hangs on with around 10% or so, maybe even more, honestly. 
Yeah, like, look how all it takes that. There's Earth Power. Oh, it actually did a little bit more than I expected. Wow. The Wave Crash just KOs me here. Oh, Sub would have been a cool option there. But I think I was just playing for an Earth Power crit. Dondozo faints, yeah. I think my opponent played this game really well. Uh, from like, I like the way they led. Um, they went the gouging mode, which I was hoping to not see. I don't know, like Incineroar and Rillaboom help in this matchup, but I don't know if like either would have moved the needle that much. Chimpao was their last one, so maybe dropping Bolt for Incin would have been better for us in this game. But yeah, I think if I could replay this, I think the tools we had were actually fine. I just need to play... Like, that turn one uh, could have gone a lot better for me. I was kind of trying to make a hard read that they were going to normal Terra. And if they normal Terra and I end up KOing them with close combat, this game looks very different as well. But I think the reality is that Gouging Fire is actually a huge problem for us in this matchup. So, Champao should survive with the Sliver here. And they just get a knock knockout on Terra Shifu. Yeah. Nicely done by my opponent. If I were to replay this, I think we drop Raging Bolt and we bring in Cinnaroar in the back. Uh, that should be Assault Vest Dragon. So I'm guessing maybe Dragonite was bulky enough to also survive minus one Ice Cold Crash, given that, um, yeah, Assault Vest is fairly common on these Dragonite sets. So I like the way my opponent executed in this game a lot. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much as always for joining me. And it was really fun to make this video and talk about my journey to Worlds as well. I appreciate everyone for supporting me, whether it be as a content creator, commentator, or player. And I'm really excited to compete in Worlds this summer. And uh, of course, wanted to give Regulation F a nice send off, but we have a lot of Regulation G content coming out soon. So if you made it this far, thank you so much as always for watching. My name is Aaron Cybertron Zhang, and I'll see you next time. All right, peace.